Did I really take my Sith Trooper to Relics before my Dark Trooper? Welcome to Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes. This is a talk video and the next major block towards the Leviathan is falling into place and it's a big one. The Tide Dagger brings us a First Order and Sith attacker piloted by the Sith trooper and wow does this sith fleet already look terrifying i'm going to cover the kit reveal take a look at the insights breakdown and analysis look at the fleet synergies even though we know for the most part what ships are going to be in there but looking at how these ships are starting to fit together because this is a glue ship and then we wrap up with our usual free to play gearing of my roster. With the dagger, we're getting a new looking graphic that's very much pared down, just pretty much giving us the tags, attacker, first order, Sith. The insights are what used to be known as the insights here. What we were just looking at is the bird's eye view understanding of the mechanics before we get into the kit. Bonus turn meter, critical hits equal ability blocks, enemies less than full health equals boost to the mechanics and the kit, and this ship is going to bring a lot of offense to the Leviathan, whereas like a ship like the Sith Fury class Interceptor brought a lot of survivability. And we are going to want to maximize the assists and hit the weak spots with this fleet. For our breakdown and analysis, the basic ability Sith Precision, physical damage to the target if critically hit, inflict ability block, and gain stacking crit damage for the rest of the encounter. You can already start seeing how this ship will bring the offense and why you want to call this ship for assist. This is a powerful basic that both can control a key enemy with the ability block, but also gets stronger as the battle goes on the more this ability gets used with the stack and crit damage, making the assist a major way of increasing the offense of the fleet. And you can already see how that's happening without even looking at how the rest of the kit is going to tie into this basic. On the first special ability, L7.0 Heavy Laser Cannons, this has a cooldown of 3. AoE physical damage. At the end of the turn, enemies with 100% health at the start of this ability are inflicted with vulnerable, and all other enemies are inflicted with tenacity down. This ability has a setup role. Nice synergies for the rest of the kit, especially the basic. Vulnerable guarantees a critical hit, helping the stack and crit damage, and in combination with the tenacity down, that's going to help the ability blocks. This ability will be helpful, but not crucial. There's enough crits going around this kit that I think this ability is more of a first turn ability where it helps start the engine and the mechanics of the fleet and later in the battle going with those basics getting the stacking effects is probably going to be more beneficial depending on what you need from some of these other fleets or some of these other ships that we have forthcoming. With the unique ability, the first one, Emperor's Edict. For this ability, let's start with defining Vengeance, which is new Vengeance at 15 stacks, AoE cleanse all Sith allies, gain bonus turn meter, and lose all stacks of Vengeance. And we get Vengeance through this unique. So whenever an enemy attacks out of turn or another Sith ally is inflicted with a debuff that can be dispelled, gain one stack of Vengeance, which should be going on pretty consistently depending on the fleet you're going up against. Whenever the Vengeance bonus turn is triggered, Tie Dagger recovers 25% health and gains 5% offense stacking for the rest of the encounter. So not only are we getting that stacking crit damage from the basic, this unique is getting us stacking offense. Then during the Vengeance bonus turn, Dagger can ignore Taunt, and if the allied capital ship is Sith, so the Leviathan, the def Dagger will also ignore protection. This ability here, this is the meta counter. The attacks out of turn especially hurt the profundity, and the debuffs really are going to hurt the executor, but really both 
fleets will be hurt by both ends of this. They both have attacks out of turn, both inflict some debuffs, and this unique could trigger a lot. So Vengeance is gonna be happening very quickly. So this ability sounds so strong to me that it makes me wonder if we can even get some partial functionality of the Sith fleet without the Leviathan. I think we'll need the Interceptor, but maybe we can do some fun things without the Leviathan. There's already a lot of Sith synergy falling into place because of the ship, and we'll talk more about that. The second unique ability, Eradicate the Weak. This is a crew skill. Now, there's a lot going on here, so we're going to take it in parts. And this ability, it makes me think a lot of different things. So the first portion here, at the start or when reinforced, for each active Sith ally, including the capital ship, TIE Dagger gains 20% max protection and 10% tenacity until the end of the encounter. Now, this portion here makes me think that the Leviathan is going to be contributing a lot with that extra max protection. I'm already imagining this ship to be a glass cannon, and without the Leviathan, it is going to be significantly weaker to the degree that in a first order lineup it may be able to do some things if you can protect it but it's going to be fairly easy to take out maybe even in one hit under a first order lineup the second portion here the first time each enemy falls below 100 percent health tie dagger gains 25 defense penetration stacking for the rest of the encounter this could stack fast now remember with vengeance you're going to get bonus turns and you get to ignore protection when under the Leviathan, which means every time you get that bonus turn, you'll be able to target who you want, hit them, and that's going to immediately trigger the stacking defense penetration, which along with the stacking crit damage, along with that stacking offense, you're now gonna get stacking defense penetration, making the damage output of this fleet very quickly going to get crazy. Well, in particular, the tie dagger and i'm going to want to spread this around you can focus down on a character but i want to get all that defense penetration triggered from every ship as quickly as possible then you can keep attacking it's going to be fairly easy to get these enemy ships below 100 percent health i'm a little less concerned about focusing down on one immediately. Next, whenever the TIE Dagger uses a basic ability against an enemy with less than 100% health, that attack scores a critical hit if possible. And this portion of the unique is why with the first special, the only special, I said I was less concerned about using it deeper into the battle. Because deeper into the battle, the enemy is very likely going to be at less than 100% health, especially under the Leviathan, because with Vengeance you'll be ignoring protection, so you immediately be able to get it below 100% health. You're going to be critically hitting all the time, which means you no longer need to worry about Vulnerable, which is going to help you pass the critical chance check you'll just be very quickly gaining all that stacking crit damage by attacking an enemy with less than 100% health and being able to take advantage of that guaranteed critical hit. With this final chunk here, whenever another ally attacks an enemy with a concussion mine, the tie dagger assists, dealing 50% less damage. The less damage doesn't matter. What you care about here is the attack out of turn because the attack out of turn that is more vengeance which means you're getting to the bonus turn faster. You're ignoring protection faster. You're getting your enemy below 100% health faster and you're getting all those critical hits feeding into all of that stacking crit damage and that stacking offense from vengeance so there's just a ton of synergy that's going on so your other turns attack someone with a, with a concussion mine get those assists get all of those stacking effects and the final portion at the start of dagger's turn recover 20 percent protection per enemy with less than 100 percent health and so you get another effect here of where I was saying spread out that damage to get that stacking defense penetration. Spreading out that damage also means you're going to get more protection recovery. So you'll just want to help keep every all your opponents below that 100% health threshold. And then you'll 
aid into the survivability of the ship, which I still imagine it's going to need it. And now finally for the reinforcement ability, premeditated response. Enter the battle, tie dagger gains five stacks of vengeance and crit damage up for two turns. Inflict a random enemy with healing immunity. With a reinforcement ability like this, the dagger is clearly meant to be in the starting lineup. You'd want the ship there anyway, but this reinforcement is written so you won't even consider using the dagger as a reinforcement except under a first order lineup where you'll have to but it's not going to really do anything to help the fleet in any capacity so just erase this ability from your mind you don't need to know it the tie dagger is critical this ship is the glue i'm going to be going after this chase hard trying to finish it right away this is the ship that starts pulling together all the disparate mechanics of each other major Sith ship and starts forming them into a functional fleet. As I said earlier in the video, it may even be usable as soon as the Sith Interceptor is available. And we may not need to wait for the Leviathan. The Leviathan will elevate it to a meta fleet, but it might be a soft counter even before then. So this fleet is going to cripple any counter that uses assists. So much so, I'm wondering if everyone needs to get a good Radis fleet to counter it. I don't see anything else really working. Now, let's start with the most important synergies here. The, we're going to begin with the Sith Fighter. The Sith Fighter and TIE Dagger are going to do great together. The Sith Fighter's unique ignores protection, so it'll be damaging into the health immediately. This unique also benefits all other Sith ships because as the Sith ships fall below 100% health, this unique gives all Sith allies 25% turn meter. So there's going to be a ton of turn meter gain coming from this ship. And as they target ships with less than 100% health, Sith ships will gain foresight and defense penetration. So already on top of what's going on with the TIE Daggers kit, the Sith Fighter is just going to pour a little bit of gas on it. Now on top of that, with the special ability, I think this is the special ability, this is going to inflict healing immunity to ensure the enemy stays below 100% health and we don't see a lot of recovery. It's one thing that I think this is how we're going to see this fleet eventually be countered. It's going to be a lot of healing. We're going to see a, the next meta bring in healing and cleanses to counteract what's going on here, maybe even some critical hit immunity. Those are the types of mechanics that are gonna start negating this, other than Radis possibly outrunning the damage and blowing up the Leviathan. Now, the final thing here, and this is a little bit of a downside to the synergy here because this is gonna to need to come in as a reinforcement. Not, uh, partly because just this is gonna make the Sith Fighter a better ship. So the reinforcement here, the Sith Fighter gains foresight whenever a Sith ally scores a critical hit, which is going to be happening all the time under the dagger. And not only will the fighter constantly have foresight, it gains offense when it has foresight, but it will get rapidly weaker as it loses max health through that synergy and under those conditions. So that's the trade-off. With the B-28 Extinction Class Bomber, the big thing here, obviously, taunting and concussion mines. Quick refresher on the concussion mines. These things blow up all after one turn. They do 10% of the max health of damage. It's AOE damage, and it will inflict days. So it does a whole lot when it's working. But what really matters here is this unique ability. The bomber is going to be placing a lot of concussion mines from this unique. Whenever a Sith ally is damaged or evades, it's placing concussion mines, which will synergize with some tenacity down. And the bomber is going to recover protection whenever a concussion mine goes off, which will be often. They're going to spread like crazy. They're going to blow up after a turn. The evasion mechanic from the Sith Fighter, that's going to help keep the Sith Fighter alive because this thing's going to be constantly taunting. 
and the enemy is going to be actively hurting itself by targeting the fighter or trying to do AoEs and triggering the foresight. So there's going to be a ton of concussion mines going everywhere. The bomber is going to be constantly recovering and it's going to be really difficult to take this thing out. And that's without even bringing up the effects of the days which are going to further negate ships like the profundity, the executor, the malevolence, the negotiator. There's so many fleets in this game that utilize a lot of assists and that is going to be mitigated here, which is why I was saying at the top of this portion why I think the Radis is going to be pretty important. There's just not a lot of ships that don't rely on counters to uh, to counters and assists to be effective. With the Fury class interceptor, this can be a little bit more cursory because we had a recent video on this. I'll just tag it in the end here. The interceptor is going to be critical to keeping the dagger and the fighter alive. I expect the dagger to be very easy to take out in the incept in the interceptor is what's going to bring the survivability to this fleet the basic ability is going to spread ability blocks concussion mines healing immunities it's going to very quickly spread all those debuffs around which is going to tie further into the dagger there's a this special here calls an assist that assist is going to just get, feed into the stacking offense, the stacking crit damage. But the big thing here, it's all about this unique ability here, which is just going to bring a ton of stats, the stable bulwark, the reinforced determination, all of this is going to make this fleet way more effective. This is just elevating the floor, whereas the tie dagger is bringing it all together and making them work as a team. We wrap up with the free to play gearing of my roster. This is the gearing from April 25th, so just about a month ago. And I think this was prior to the final week of 5v5 before we went into that season of 3v3. You can see a number of characters have advanced in their farming. Zori Bliss to six stars. She's fully farmed now. A node farm character takes about a month and a half. And, and uh, Chieftain here, similar situation. This is where I take him up to five stars, but He's basic, like I'm gonna probably be done with him tomorrow. So that's like a month from that point to finishing him. Warrior, super fast farm on a cheap cantina node. If you do the 300 crystal refreshes, that's, it's like a 14, less than 14 day farm. That might be like a 12 day farm. He happened very quickly. This must have been very soon after him becoming farmable. You can see I have a gear 11 trench at this point. We went very quick on gearing him up. We're gonna take him up to gear 12 here. Showed where the Kairos were at the start of this session of gearing so you can kind of see how many I apply. Just looking for the cheap pieces that I don't have to worry about because I'm still working towards Sith Eternal Emperor and Calcestis. We don't know how many Kairos are gonna be on some of those other characters. So I don't wanna use too many too quickly. Tarkin here, just bringing him higher in relics, just make everyone's fleets better. And working towards Sith Eternal Emperor again, so doing double duty with some of those things. See the other key characters I want to work on, but I'm showing you the progress on these characters, where I am with a lot of this. I, I just don't want to change the rate at which I unlock and gear up Kelkestis. So I'm being very careful with the Kairos, but getting pretty close on everything. This is when I take the Tuscan, or not the Tuscans, the Troopers, to gear 12, which is something I had been holding off on just because I like to showcase what you can do with gear 11 Troopers because they're amazing. They punch up crazy high, and I held off because of that. But now, gear 12. Really looking forward to this ship. I'm gonna be hitting this Galactic Chase hard. Do your refreshes. And now take advantage, 
go after this thing. This is going to be a very important ship. It's so important that I don't even, I can't even imagine now what the next Sith ship is going to bring. Because this is already bringing a ton. How are you adding another ship into this? Like probably going to be a reinforcement that is just going to do another level of things, maybe mitigate certain counters, but this ship's already doing a lot. And that's without the Leviathan, which I imagine is gonna help with more assists, which will just feed into more of that offense. It'll be very interesting to see what happens. Thank you for watching. Be safe out there, everyone. Be excellent to each other. This is Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes.